Okay guys, let's finish this thing. Um, end of Galatians today. We're not finishing the whole thing. I'll be back tomorrow in Ephesians. But um, let's finish Galatians today. Finish out this book. Remember, we've just had Paul encouraging the Galatians to walk in step with the Spirit. And in John 14, Jesus teaches people that the Holy Spirit, one of the functions and purposes of the Holy Spirit is that he will help us remember the words of Jesus. He'll help us remember the teachings and the principles that Jesus spoke to us in his time on the earth. And so the Holy Spirit is actually our prompt, our reminder of Jesus's heart. And that's why it's so important that we follow him that we walk in step with him because he can lead us somewhere that the law can't lead us he can lead us to Jesus to Jesus's heart and he can remind us of how we should live in line with Jesus's commands so um that's how we finished and I just love how Galatians 6 has this different tone Paul at the very beginning of this letter was very um adamant very bold very filled with authority and even an anger towards some of the things that had been happening to the Galatians. But by the time we finish this book, his tone is completely changed. Up in verse one, it says, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him with a spirit of gentleness. And I love this concept that despite having listed all of these sins at the end of Galatians 5, and even warning us that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, you know, it's a very strong warning. But Paul also recognises here in Galatians 6 that we do sin, we do fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us are prone to weakness, to stumbling, to errors and mistakes. The distinction between the list in Galatians 5 and this recognition in Galatians 6 is that when we choose those things, when we act in rebellion and we choose to habitually step out against the will of God, when we choose the sins that are listed in Galatians 5 then we distance ourselves intentionally from his goodness. But what he's talking about in Galatians 6 is when we stumble, when we fall, when we make mistakes. Um, in verse 1, this language around being caught in a transgression, it almost paints the picture of somebody who's like sagging under this heavy weight, under this heavy load. And I love that Paul speaks of gentleness and speaks of the gentleness that is going to be the problem solver for those people that we need to not just correct them or rebuke them, we need to restore them. We don't ignore their sin, but we restore them to the right place that they should have. And it says, watch yourself, bear one another's burdens. Don't think you're bigger than you are, but carry the load together. You know, we we have this amazing model shown to us that we can all carry the, the loads of this life together. It makes an assumption that we all do have burdens, that there's nobody who lives burden free, but that as we're called to be the church, we're called to carry our burdens alongside one another and even for one another. And I just think that's a really beautiful um, concept. But any self-importance, any pride will corrupt the whole model. The model is that we carry one another's burdens, that we walk this life together in gentleness with one another, not thinking that we're better than each other, not judging each other, not being conceited. Uh, that mindset that we think that we're always right, like we read about at the end of Galatians 5. But having a grace, a patience and a generosity towards each other, sharing. He goes on to talk about sharing in a second. These are the ways that the kingdom is built. These are the ways that God is glorified on the earth. But we have to examine our hearts and we have to examine ourselves and just check that we're in right standing. He goes on to say each will bear his own load. That's not in contradiction to the command to bear one another's burdens. What he's talking about there is that, you know, other people's successes, other people's failures, they don't have any bearing on your holiness. You have to stand and account for your own holiness before God one day. We'll each have to bear our own load in that. So examine your heart and do things with the right motivation. Then it talks about share. Share the things that you have with the people that are around you and even those who are over you, your leaders in God. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. I think this is just um, talking about the fact that you can't shortcut these things. There's no shortcut, quick fix, quick get rich quick scheme. There aren't those things in the world with God. He won't be mocked by you trying to sow little and reap much. 
And he won't be mocked by the fact that he's given so abundantly to you and then you withhold from other people. There's a principle of sowing and reaping at work here that God says will last and will be true, whatever we try and however we look at it. So when it says, do not be weary of doing good, let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. It's about following Jesus. It's about living under the spirit, but it's also about stewarding our resources do the right things with your resources and do not give up because harvest takes time, but trust that God is in it for you. So it says, as we have the opportunity, let's do good to everyone, especially those who are in the household of faith. I think it's really interesting how in the New Testament, we often encouraged to particularly pay attention to the way that we treat other believers. And that's not to say that believers are any better or any superior to those who don't know Jesus. But I think it just shows God's heart in the way that we should honour our leaders, love one another um, and and do what we can while we have this opportunity to do good to each other. So I just love the change in tone through this letter. There's a real gentleness and love in this last chapter. And even just jumping down to verse 15, it says, neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision. It's really not about that. It's about being a new creation and only God, the creator, can make a new creation. So it's not about your efforts. It's not about uh, your standard of holiness that you're trying to attain to. It's about being a new creation in God and letting him do his will in you. For as all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them. I love the way that he started Galatians by cursing those who were bringing a false doctrine. And now he brings a blessing on those who are walking right with God. So that was Galatians. Guys, tomorrow we're going to jump back and um, jump back into a new book. And we're actually going to do Ephesians. But well done for reading your first book of 2021 if you're following this real time. Hello, if you're catching up, well done for reading Galatians. Congrats, it's all good. Um, But tomorrow we're going to come back with Ephesians. So I just love to encourage you, if you want to, in the comments, to share something that summarizes the book of Galatians for you. Maybe it's a verse, maybe it's a sentence, a statement, but what is it that you think God's shown you through this book? I'd love to hear from you.